someone else that wanted to have help on a lovebirds box. So I'll close this and open lovebirds tent box. So this is uh, what I made. That it was similar to what she was wanting to do, but she wanted to know how to do this. And you know, you can make designs for people all day long, but it's a whole lot better if you learn how to do the process yourself. So um, I didn't have time to make a video between then and now, so I recommended we just cover this on the webinar. This is the design that I created and these are the pieces. So um, what I thought I'd do is just show you how I get through all these pieces. I have a little bit of time and it takes a little bit of time to start with all of these to end up with this. So that's the goal here. So what I'm going to do is just, um, I don't like to leave open my photo, but then again, it's very helpful to look at a photo while you're creating the design. I'll just, uh, I'll close this one. And, oops, didn't want to do that. There we go. I'll, to get rid of a page, you can uh, click on it and right click on the tab and click on delete. It'll remove that page, but first I'm going to copy these shapes. So to get rid of the page, right click, delete, and it deletes that page. And I don't really need this page either. Right click, delete. And I get rid of that. So I just have the picture here, which I might have to refer to. I'll bring it over here just for reference. To get a picture in to your file, you can pixel trace. If I go to the, the picture that I made in the Lovebirds box, I can find the picture. This is the original picture that she had. Let me bring it in so you can see it. You'll want to set the threshold at 255 and texturize path, apply, and import. And the picture comes in. So this was her original picture. I'm not going to make the exact same one. I don't want to steal somebody else's design, but you can actually make it how you want it to be. Um, I found some pieces in the gallery. So we, we use basic shapes and those pieces that we can find. These are, are some of the shapes that I used here. And I'll show you where I found them. Aside from this, I made that one and I'll show you how I did that. But these are shapes here from basic shapes. And these are from the gallery. And this piece was made using a rounded rectangle and a circle. So let's see where those pieces are so you can find them. You click on the uh, Import Basic Shapes icon. And we're looking for a few shapes here. We're looking for a square. So I'll double click the square, add SQ in here. And wherever your, your cursor is, that's where it's going to come in. Now I need a heart, so I'm going to type HE and that takes me the heart. Heart 1 is what I used. So I got that. The next one I had here was a triangle, so I'll type T or I and I use this uh, triangle. And then we use a rectangle, REC, and I use the rounded rectangle. And then a circle, so you type CI, you get the circle. They all come in at the size of your carrot. So that's where I got all the shapes that I needed for this design. 
You can change the colors or as you need to. And then the other three pieces I found in the gallery. So to, to find those, you, you could find maybe other ones that you like better. Um, what you do is you click on this icon that looks like a tic-tac-toe grid. And the first thing I searched for was a um, fleur-de-lis, F-L-E-U-R. I just searched for floor and descending and did a search here. And there are several fleur-de-lis. didn't like any on that page, but here's one right here. You know, this is an SVG file that will come straight to the page, and I know that because it has this gray checkered background. So I click Download, and it was added to my page here. And then the next one was Birds. I'll refine the search, and maybe it's Lovebirds. I don't know. Do a search. Oh, there they are, Lovebirds. Now this one, when you download it, it opens a whole new page because you see it's an MTC file. It's on a full mat here. And one of the things I noticed about this is that when you click on it, you can't edit it. That's because the whole page is locked. Go down to the lower right corner, click on the, the lock icon and unlock all. Now you see the plus signs here. I like to uh, since I've got it unlocked, I want to make these birds kissing like they were in the original box that she had. And then I'm going to grab both of them and copy. And I'm going to take it over to my file here. And Control-Shift-V to paste in place. Now those are way too big, so I'll just make them a more manageable size right now just by moving the corner arrow. And the other shape we were looking for, oh, a flourish. I, I wrote in swirl, S-W-I-R-L, and did a search here. And uh, yeah, you can look through all the swirls. I, I wrote down that I've, I found a swirl uh, oh, look, I didn't even write it down. So you can look through the swirls and see if you find one that you like. There's only six pages. It's pretty quick to browse through. Hmm, I missed it. I don't know where it went. Hmm. They're saying page four, bottom right, page four. I'm glad somebody else has eyes. You're right. There it is. Okay. Click download. Thank you, Mark and Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is quite large. And if you were looking for something uh, smaller, you could have missed it. So these are the pieces that I worked with for the design. This one is, is big, and I noticed when I cut it here that some of the, these little pieces tore because of the size of it. So to avoid that, I just use a blackout to get rid of all the inside little pieces. They're fine if you're making it real big, but if it's going to be smaller, it's probably better not to have those uh, little 
problem things. Now these can all be sized and reshaped as you need them to be. And you can de determine the size of your final project. I was uh, thinking that this is going to be a centerpiece on a table, so I wanted to make it as big as I could make it using one sheet of paper, not knowing if she needed multiples for her party or if she just uh, needed one. But if I needed just one and I really wanted it to stand out, I would want to make it as big as I could. So I made this 2.9 inches wide, and um, let's see, the height was total height was about six and a half inches. So that would be a nice size for putting a, a little electric uh, candle in it to kind of decorate, where you could fill it with, with pretty stuff. Um, so from there, what I, I did was I changed the colors to gold, just or yellow, just so I can see them better while I'm working with them. They're all going to end up being the same color anyway. And pretty much they can all be on the same layer. I'll send it to the own layer. And I can make them all the same color at the same time. Oh, look what I did. I lost my picture. I changed its color. I want to change the color. Okay. I'll show how I made this other shape in a little bit. And it's an optional shape that I didn't use for this design. Okay, so to get started, I decided I would start with the, the heart first and get it kind of a size that was workable. And then I put the birds in it. But as I made it again, I decided that it would be good to start with the little bars in the design. That will help me get it spaced, and then it will help me resize all of this. So um, I'm going to uh, make this little bar 0.1 inch wide. And we'll make them. Let's see the box, 3.3 inches tall, so if you turn off the lock, then you can resize each dimension. So this is the, the size that I wanted to make the inner little pieces here. And I believe I did them I duplicated them at about a width of 0.4, not quite a half inch. And I needed one, two, three, four, five of these, so five columns, and apply. And the middle one is short. So the middle one, I wrote these down because I can't remember. And it, it, this is, these are just kind of arbitrary. You can make yours however you want. Um, and then I did another one of these up here. And I'll align these two vertically by typing V. So that kind of gives me the inside shape. And then the outside frame around the, around the edges, I wanted to make it twice as big. So I'm going to just select this, hold Control, Shift, and drag it, and make this one uh, 0.2 inches wide. So I have that. And I, I need another one of those. And I need one at the bottom, so I'm going to make another one and just rotate it. And I'm going to put the middle one right at the middle where these middle things are. 
and that will show me where the outside ones need to go. So I'll just click on it and use my left arrow key till it lines up with the edge. Or I could actually do this, select them both and type L, and they're perfectly aligned to the left. I select this one, hold the shift, type R to align to the right. And now I'm just going to duplicate that one, and we'll align them at the top by typing T. So I kind of have a design here. I also want a line that goes across the middle. So I'll select that, drag it off, control shift drag gives that, and then ro rotate it. And I'm going to put it right across the middle but I don't want it to um, go all the way through. I just want it to go through bars in the middle, kind of a perch for the birds. So now I have my basic shape. Um, oh, there's another line up here and another line down here. I'll get another one of these thin ones. Control shift and drag, rotate and I just want it pretty close to the top. And again, I can align this to the right just to make sure it's lined up. And I'll drag another one of these down to the bottom and align it to the right. And I think I'm ready now to, to size my heart. The heart's going to go in the middle almost as high as these bars, but not quite. And I do want the width to be not any wider than those two center bars. So if I need to, I can squish it a little just to make it fit. And I want it to come down a little from the, I don't want it really touching up here. And then you click on it to toggle to the selection arrows, the straight arrows, and I don't want it any wider, but I do want it longer. So I can bring it down like that, where I want it to be. And again, you can make, you're the artist, you can make it the size you want. And once I have it the size I want, you notice that this heart is a frame and this is solid. So to make this a frame, I select the heart and I go to shadow and I'm going to make this as thick as the as the bars themselves and I want a minus 0.1 and accept. Then I'll select both of these and um, I don't think I got them both so I need to Get them both and then I want to join them. There's the outside. Hold the shift and select the middle. No, I'm not getting both though, so oh, that's because I didn't hold shift. Put my hand on the wrong button. You won't see the join button if you don't have two things selected. Okay, so I have the heart frame now, and that looks good. So now I'm going to get the bottom decoration, this here, and I'm going to flip it, because I like the way it looks flipped. I mean, yeah, flipped. And then I'm going to make a duplicate and mirror that one, and move it with my left arrow key until they're overlapping. It's right. And then I'm going to resize these so that they'll fit kind of um, in this area. And again, I don't want them going beyond the little bars. So this is where I can resize them. If you want yours bigger, you can make them bigger. And I want the middle of that design to be right over the middle post here. 
And now I'm going to deal with this little post because it's a little too high. I want it to just go to the edge of the heart. Likewise, this one, I don't want to go into the heart, just to the edge. And the heart looks like it needs to be vertically aligned with that. That's better. V vertically aligns. And maybe these need to come down just a hair. You can, you're the artist. This needs to be ver vertically aligned with the heart as well, so I type a V. Okay, now I'm ready for the birds. Birds are a little big. I want the birds to sit on the perch. Centered, so I'm getting the X that selects that and get it right over the center, and then I'll just I'll resize them until I get them where I want them to be. And again, how you size them and how you position them is up to you. I do want them to be anchored both to the, the crossbar, their perch, and I, I want them to be touching the edges of the heart. This will make them not be floppy as they're displayed in the cage. Okay, that looks about right. And again, you can uh, choose your, your designs how you want. So that leaves the top part of the box, which is the shape of a triangle. Now, we made the box 3.9 inches wide, so I think I'll just put the lock on and do the triangle 3.9 inches wide and enter. And, oh, I didn't resize it to 3.9. That's a good thing to do now. I'll leave it locked so I keep the proportions. And it's supposed to be 2.9, not 3.9. All right, there's 2.9. This is going to be 2.9. Lee is saying 3.3. Yeah, it can't be 3.3 because I'm going to have four of them. Four times three is 12, so it has to be 2.9 in order to fit on one page and have a tab. Oh, the 3.3 was high, okay. Yeah, and I don't really need it to be that tall, so um, I'm just eyeballing it at this point. But what did I say I made my triangles as? Let's see, 2.6 inches high. That's kind of high. I'm going to make it 2.9 inches wide, and I'm going to line it up vertically with this. So I'm holding the shift key, selecting the line, and typing V to kind of shift it into place. And now I'm going to take it up a bit so that I'm just barely overlapping. And this is, um, you, can, you can make it as tall, but I think mine was a little bit too tall on this. It, that, again, that's the artist discretion. You can use how you like. I'm going to put the shadow in here, and again, a minus 0.1 should be fine. I'll accept that. Select both. And, um, you know, if you put the black below the colored and join, then you keep the color. I could have done that with the heart. And then we can position this into that shape, and it's pretty close to the right size. It's a little big. I want to make sure it's the, the floor is touching at least at three different points. So I can center it, type S, and then take it down until it's barely touching the bottom. And that looks good. So I have all these pieces done. And 
um, I can duplicate. But before I do, I want to decide if I want flaps on this on these edges. Now before we've made some tent boxes and I think in the thread somebody showed a picture of of a design that we did back in um, May of 2013 that had the flap edges here that you could glue together. Um, I found out when I had put tabs on my original one and if you put tabs you don't have any way to open the box and it was, um, it didn't lay real nice, so I removed the tabs when I assembled this, and I removed them in my file as well. Um, but I really like this, this effect of having the flaps fold out. They're like petals, and then they kind of uh, glue together on the corners. But again, you have to have a way to open the box if you're going to glue down flaps. So. Again, it's a judgment call. To make this design, it's uh, pretty simple. You just, uh, I click on the Bezier Draw tool and I draw from the point, on point, left click, and then right click here. If I can keep my hand still, right click. And then use the arrow key just to drag this thing out from the center as far as you want it. Oh, I didn't really want to do that. It was the wrong piece. But I can hide this piece. I wanted to get the line I drew. Left click and just drag. Now that I have that shape, I can get my draw tool and just connect the two. Left click and right click. And then I can make another one and mirror and move it into place. Now if I do this design, then my triangle in the middle becomes score lines instead of cut lines. And I would get these so that they're just joined at the center. So that's up to you if you want to use those or not. For now, we'll just leave them out. And you show everything here. Change the color on this heart. And we had a tab here. If you use the flaps, you don't need a tab. You would just punch a hole in the top where the flaps are. But to make the... Um, little tab on the top where the ribbon would go to tie it all together. Um, you can use your little rectangle that you brought in and your circle and just resize your circle. I think I resized my circle to about 0.2. This was about 0.4 I think. So I'll make the width 0.4 and an inch tall is fine. So if I make my circle about a point two wide, it should fit in the middle. So I'll select both and type S to stack. And then I'm just going to move the circle up towards the top. And select them both and join. Now this can go, this can be resized a little if you don't want it that tall. And it can be added after uh, it'll be added just to two pieces. The other two pieces I just bent the end over, scored it so that it folds under and kind of just sits here smoothly underneath the two pieces that have the, the arch here. So now I think I'm ready to go ahead and duplicate this. I uh, move it over to the left side of the screen then I go to edit, duplicate. And I want them just to barely overlap, so I give it a minus 0 0.01 so that they'll weld nicely. And I don't need five, so I need only four of these, four sides, and apply. So I have four pieces. And the other thing that I need, I didn't save myself one, so I'll go get one. I need another square for the bottom. SQ, 
double click. And I need this to be the 2.9 inches square, 2.9, because that's the width of each of my panels, and it's also the depth of the box. And I just barely overlap it on this, and I'll line it up on the right side. So the other thing that we need is tabs to go around the edges here. Now you can draw tabs, uh, just left click, left click, left click, left click, right click, and then get them lined up. If you, if you click a line and it bends, just click it again and um, let me try that again. Convert to a line. Right click and convert to line. Then at the end, I'm just going to join node to closest node. So now I have this little tab here. I'm going to hold Control shift and drag and rotate this to the bottom. And again, these colors are hard to see. But control shift, drag, rotate. I don't know if Susan has easy ways to do this. I'm going to send all these to their own layer so I can color them and see them. So we just want to make sure these are overlapping because when we weld, we don't want to have to undo them. Now these tabs can't be any wider than the width of your, your post because if they are, they will um, show when you fold them under. So these tabs really cannot be wider than 0.2. This is slightly wider, so 0.2. This one also. I should have resized it before I duplicated, but that's okay. The last thing that I need to do is add a new layer for the score lines, or I could select a layer Oh, I don't have any score lines yet. So I added a new layer by clicking on the larger of the two green plus icons in the lower right corner, and that gave me this new layer. And now I'm going to go through and I'm going to draw some score lines. So I'm going to click on the Bezier Draw tool and just left click everywhere where I want. I'm going to left click at the top and go across here. And the lines that are there already show me where I want, want them. So. Um, now left click here, right click actually to end it, and I would like the lines to go down each of these, so left click, right click, left click, right click, left click, right click. Now I don't have to draw score lines for this box because this box is actually my score line. If I send it to its own layer, I can make it score lines. If I create line style. So now that will be a score line. I'm going to hide it, though, till I get these um, Uh, I actually want to weld it first, so I'll make this a regular line, but I do want it overlapping here. To change it back to regular line, click line style, click on this arrow and no dashes. And I'll draw that line in later, but I'm going to hide all the score lines because when I weld, I don't want any of those score lines to get messed up. I'll move these 
down a little. Seems like I shrunk them a little bit. Okay, so to weld, I just select them all and click on weld. And there's my box. Did they overlap? They didn't overlap enough. So I'm going to uh, control Z. I'm surprised that these didn't overlap. I'm just uh, clicking twice on each one of these sidebars. Now we'll try it again. Almost enough. Control Z again. I'll move this inside. Left arrow, just two clicks. These little uh, notches here will show us where the score lines are, so I'm not too worried about that. But now I've got all these empty layers. I'm going to click on the trash can to get rid of those. I'm going to show my score lines and move them to the top so we can see them and change them to dashes. And so it looks like I need one more square to make one more set of score lines. So I'll add those. I'll select the score line layer. Double click on my square. And I'll just put this square in. I could just draw my score lines, but since I, I need a perfect square anyway, I can put it where I want it to be. And change its color and then change its line style. Create new line style and increase the spacing. So there's my score lines. I think I would like to select just the score lines and join them so they can all and stay together. And one thing I forgot to add was the little tabs here. We'll hide the score lines. Undo that and just select this. What did I do? Weld it too? Need to split that off. And I'm going to put it at the top overlapping the triangle here. and hold the shift and control and drag it and put another one on the opposite one over here. So if I hold the shift and select those and then select the body and weld, then those will be welded to it as well. So that's how I made it. Well, I could show the score lines now and you can actually get rid of these extra little shapes. Sometimes I keep these shapes on another page in case I, after I do my test cut, I want to modify something. Then I have all the pieces and I can redo it again. So be sure to save your project. So you go to Save As, and I'll just call this one uh, number four because my number two has all my little pieces. So we have any questions? Yeah, Veronica asked about the tabs for the cage. To glue them, I guess, to glue Oh, this, these? Well, the one end to the other end. I don't <clears throat> know if you need them or not. Since oh, yeah. Them too. Yeah, that's right. I, I usually, when I make these down here, I add the other one. So um, I'll just draw me some more. I'll hide these lines, though, first. So this would be a score this would be a score line too. So I grab my pen and click there. I have some dotted lines here that would help me with this, so I'll just use those. 
left click here, right click here. Really, I didn't want to do that. Left click. You're still left click. You're still on your hidden layer, though. Yeah, I see. I've got a. I, I am. And that's why they disappeared. I don't want to be on the hidden layer. I want to add a new layer here. You go left click, left click, left click, left click, right click. And they should connect when I do that, but I'm never precise enough. Okay, now um, you'll notice that I, I drew a line on my... Uh, that I didn't want here. So I'm just going to select it and delete it. I'm also going to use this tool here to remove this line because it's supposed to be a dashed line. And if I get on this same layer here and draw from the inside dot to the bottom. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just going to drag this up and hide my spore lines. You can get some spare little dots here that don't belong. You can use your eraser to erase them. And what I'm going to do is just move this here and right click would have been easier if I would have done it with the others, that's for sure. And join to closest node. I'm going to move this layer to the bottom so I can see everything. Right click, move layer to bottom. And now I'll show my score lines. And I think I deleted my score line because it was ugly. So I'm going to hide this. And now I'm going to left click here and right click there. And I think that does it. Thank you for reminding me. I always forget something. And then if you want to have it look like it's going to cut, you want to take the, yeah, do the two layers and join them. Okay, that looks better. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, no additional <laughs> questions. Uh, Darlene said, "Great tutorial." I better right, save it again since I fixed it. Yeah. Any other questions for Julie, or any other questions? That that was the last part of the um, the thread from the forum too for tonight's webinar. So, any questions at all, or specifically anything for Julie? Well, you have homework. You should create a similar design, but use different shapes. Create a box for a party favor or a table decoration. Uh, Carrie's asking about the pedal tabs at the top that you had talked about a little bit earlier, but decided against, I think. Well, if I wanted to add the pedal tabs, I probably wouldn't add these things here. Um, so. And I would also change the design so that the triangles are fold lines. So I would go back to my other version that I saved that had all of these pieces here not welded yet. So you see that I changed the outside line here to dashes. And I showed you how I made these, right? So um, before I before I welded it, I put in these tabs. I should showed you how to make them, and 
I would move these out of the way and hide all my score lines. Because I don't want the score lines in the way. Let's see if I can find everything. I think these lines right here, oh, those are hidden. So I think I can um, weld everything. Only thing is, I lost my centers here, so I have to hide these also. Put them on another layer. I want them to weld to these squares, so I'll weld those first. I don't want them to weld. Huh. I have these all as frames. Maybe I'll, I'll just go ahead and show them and weld them first. And I like to hide these outside lines. I didn't really practice this part this time because they're disappearing. I create the, the regular triangle just like before. So everything could be welded except these lines won't be score lines. So what else did I hide here? Unhide that. I'm going to make a copy of, uh, these are joined. I'm going to make a copy of this square. You really have to hide these score lines because if you weld with score lines showing, then you lose them all. I should be able to weld all these just like I did the other.
And I just had to join those to make the frames. And they should well now. Yeah. Sometimes when you can't see what's going on, it helps to go to outline. Then you can go back to fill and see what's happening. Now these, again, are not overlapping quite enough. Okay. Now these can be overlapped just as they were. They weren't really in the way before, but they just had to fix that other join problem first. So I'll just, I'll just do this one. This one, you select both of these and then the frame and you weld. And you can use your triangle again. Let me find my little shapes up here that are hidden. And this is where those lines should have worked for score lines. I'll show it with the um, outline. So I'm going to keep these this uh, triangle right at the height of that and and the score lines are right here. So this is going to be a score line. I'm going to just send it to its own layer and make it a score line. And now I can just duplicate that line. Just uh, I'll hide the others because every time I do it Just control shift and drag. And these this line should line up right with those previous lines. And once I have them all in position, I'm going to hide these. And then I will go through and uh, delete these lines because we won't be needing them. We've got score lines in their place. Well, they would disappear. I'm just left-clicking and hitting my delete key. <clears throat> but they would disappear when you added the other things and welded them. The, the yeah, they, they disappeared here. So let me undo that so you can see what Brian's saying here. When I when I add these, and they're overlapping, and select them and weld, then those extra lines go away anyway. So it's the same idea. I'll show you the fill outline. And then when we show the, the score lines, you see that these, these flaps will just fold. But also, um, this is not really hidden. You can't tell it when it's all showing the fill. But these lines are still there. They're just being obscured by the score layer. If I push the score layer to the bottom, you won't see the score line, but you will be able to see the design. Yeah, the other thing you use it. probably That's why it. I was a little bit... Yes. I was going to say, the other thing you probably do is leave the score lines on top, but then just do a um, break one of the nodes and then it wouldn't, wouldn't have the fill that would cover the... It looks like he's 
Yeah, it looks like you still need to do a join or something there. Well, you, you can't join. The thing is, if you join score lines, it, it, you, you see the color I've added. Um, the score lines add a shape and they add color that's not really there. I run into that all the time when I'm doing um, score lines that are right. filled with but, color. But take, take, take one of those triangles that's the score lines. So get on that layer and edit one of the one of the triangles and just break one of the nodes at one of the corners, and then you still have oh. the, you still have the score lines, all three score lines for the triangle, but it won't be a filled shape. Um, it should just be a. Um, it's turn your colors back on so you can see. Yeah, so just right click. Well, yeah, neutralize or. Convert to line first. There you go. What did you do? I lost it because I bent it. We'll convert to line. Right. At the top, we'll do a break node. Yeah. And then you then you still see the triangular score lines, but it doesn't. It's not a closed shape, so it doesn't fill with color. That way, you can leave your score lines on top. Still use the triangle as the shape. Okay. Yeah, that worked. So then um, you get the idea. And the, the reason I could have done this all the weld at the beginning, it's just that you couldn't get the visual effect of those score lines, and I was a little bit, had to approach it backwards. But normally I just, uh, uh, weld all the shapes together in one at one time. Then I add the score lines. So these then would be folded towards you, towards the outside of the box. And you could um, just put a hole in the top. Right, a little a little hole. And then you'd thread ribbon through this, and I've made this before. It turned out really nice. When you put this little hole in here and just join, except it joined with the, the other layer. Score line layer. And each, you would put a hole in each one of these, and then you thread ribbons all the way through all of them, and it holds it closed without glue. And these flaps just kind of uh, form little petals, which is nice. Okay, so there was a question on the your the the project that you saved is number four, so okay. the one without the flowered petals or flowered flaps when you get there. Okay. And she it was from Here we are. It says should the bottom right side of the square be moved to touch oh, I think she's just fine tuning it. So uh, should the bottom right side of the square be moved to touch a, a touch more to the right? And she's talking about the score line on the bottom of the square, I think. Lee, if yeah, I don't know if you can clarify. And right there there's a it's a, a little place where the flap forms, and I didn't line the flap up, but the flap is um, going to be folded under, and this flap's going to be folded under, so if it's not perfectly lined up, it doesn't really matter. But if you wanted to get rid of that little notch, you could just uh, use a little eraser. I would use a eraser with a with the um, control key down so it would go straight. Well, but if you if you raise that notch is really the the square at the bottom, so you'd you'd have a hole. Yeah, it's the, really this the square corner, and that's why it doesn't really matter. It's just the the placement, my placement of the the flaps was faulty, but since the flaps don't really show, I shrunk the flap a little bit. And I did that because it was too big. 
um, it would have been visible over here on the opposite side. I know because my original cut design did that. It was too fat and it covered up this whole part of the design where there's supposed to be holes. But it doesn't matter if the flap's too short. You could do it with the little tiny tabs and it would still work. But you're going to make it yourself, right? And you can just make it perfect. 